Isaiah chapter 65. I was sought by those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that was not called by my name. I have stretched out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk away and is not good. According to their own thoughts, a people who provoke me to anger continually to my face, who sacrifice in gardens and burn incense on altars of brick, who sit among the graves and spend the night in the tombs, who eat swine's flesh, and the broth of abominable thing is in their vessels, who say, Keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am holier than you. These are smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all the day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence, but will repay, even repay into their bosom. Your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, says the Lord, who have burned incense on the mountains and blasphemed me on the hills. Therefore I will measure their former work into their bosom. Thus says the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one says, Do not destroy it. For a blessing is in it, so will I do for my servant's sake, that I may not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, an heir of my mountains, my elect shall inherit it, and my servant shall dwell there. Here I am <laughs>
So Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt, and Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Pharaoh went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. It isn't often that we have a chance to share in that word, but for this Father's Day, I thought it was very appropriate. If you remember the story of Joseph had many dreams, encountered many things with his brothers. It's a story of being elevated and then finding himself down in the back, down in the bargain basement with the scratch and dents to being lifted up once again. It's a powerful story of how God could use one man, but not just one man, because we've been talking about the filling of the Holy Spirit. And when we look at Joseph's life, I want to take a look at it in terms of God's power through the Holy Spirit upon Joseph. The purpose of experiencing more of the Holy Spirit in your life is not so that you can experience just, just that, not so that you can experience more of Him in your life. I know that sounds crazy. The purpose of a life saturated in the Holy Spirit is so that God can equip you and use you and empower you so his will can be accomplished on earth as it is in heaven. Therefore, he is the source and substance, and we are the conduit, just the garden hose, if you will. The spirit and the gifts are ours says Luther in a mighty fortress. But there are more, we have to understand, like rakes and shovels to do his work rather than diamond pendants for showing off. Jesus calls us to join him in his work and we need the same Holy Spirit and the Spirit's gifts to accomplish his purposes on earth today. The question is never how much of the Holy Spirit do you have, but rather it is how much of you does the Holy Spirit have. One of the greatest blocks to experiencing the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit actually is Bible colleges and seminaries themselves. Actually, it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for an evangelical to encounter the Spirit in all his fullness in a Bible college or seminary that gets folks saved for heaven, but neglects the person and the power and the working of the Holy Spirit intended to break the chains of captives, that which is so necessary. Our Bible colleges and seminaries do more to make people good, good boys and good girls, but good for nothing when it comes to the power and authority that we as all believers are charged with to bring healing and to liberate nations. Too often, we're content with cake and coffee we're more content with cake and coffee than confession and conversion. Mm -hmm. And that's coming from a Lutheran. <laughs> Reinhard Bonnke said it well. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, the church is going to have to serve a lot of cake and coffee to make up for his absence. What changes industry? What changes lives? What changes families? Are those men and women upon whom the Spirit of God rests? All the writers of the New Testament, we must understand, were Holy Ghost baptized, tongue talking folks. 
that everyone that wrote the scripture in the New Testament were baptized in the Holy Spirit. They spoke in tongues. And yet the church has completely neglected the third person of the Trinity in so many ways. If we believe that all scripture is God breathed and is useful as 2 Timothy says, is useful for teaching and rebuking and correcting and training in righteousness. As we read this passage of scripture, we hear that the Spirit of God was recognized on Joseph so much that Pharaoh had to acknowledge it. Pharaoh himself had to acknowledge that the Spirit of God rests upon him. And when we talk in the Old Testament about the Spirit of God, we have to understand what we're talking about is the Holy Spirit. First of all, let's look briefly into the life of Joseph. Pharaoh, who ruled over Egypt, recognized the power of the Holy Spirit in his life, this young man. Pharaoh knew, and you also readily agree, that there was something different, something unusual about Joseph's life. In the natural, I don't think there's anything, Joseph, that, that differed greatly from any other man of his day, living then or today. But watch it. What made him so unusual? What was the source of the power in the life of Joseph? Pharaoh recognized it. And the account is given in Genesis 41, verse 38. Can we find, when Pharaoh says, can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And that, I believe, is the word that God has for us today on this Father's Day. Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? Amen? Amen. I wonder if Pharaoh really knew who he was speaking about when he said this. And if he knew anything at all about the third person of the Trinity, I doubt it. But he could recognize the Spirit of God resting upon him. One thing I'm dead sure of, however, is that Pharaoh recognized many of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that were so apparent upon Joseph. Wisdom, knowledge, supernatural power in his life, a power greater than any human power, and he labeled it correctly. It was the Spirit of God that was in Joseph's life. Also, when we consider for a moment how Joseph moved in the power of the Holy Spirit, because he even had dreams and he had interpretations of dreams. He had words of knowledge and he had words of interpretation. That happens only through the filling and the present, the, the uh, presence of the Holy Spirit upon an individual. We're even right there, down in the dungeon, the Holy Spirit's gifts are at work bringing light to the darkness. I believe that that's a powerful word for us. Who wants to be that man or that woman that is recognized because the Holy Spirit has camped out and taken play, taken, taken up an abode in, in their life so that their bosses recognize the giftings 
that are applied to everyday circumstances and needed. This isn't just for, you know, church and, you know, the, the hour or so that we have together on Sunday morning. This stuff is where it's walked out. In the midst of the weddings. In the midst of the baptisms. In the midst of the doctor and health diagnosis is the scarce half out of our mind. This is the place where we need God's presence and we need His Holy Spirit empowering us. And it, it's not just for us. I've had... It's just water. Yeah. Just in case you were wondering. I've had so many folks tell us, you know, come to me and say, we, we want to know how to have more of God's presence in our lives. Well, praise God. That's wonderful. But we have to understand that this filling of the Holy Spirit isn't just to give us the warm fuzzies, mm. but it's to be used and carried forth and so that his light and his power can shine and be used wherever we go. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Almighty God, for this time that we have together. Lord, as we continue to charge in and, and explore more and more about your precious, precious Holy Spirit. Stir up the flames within us. Take us from our contentment of mediocrity and take that dry wood of all of our knowledge and information about the Bible and even knowledge about Jesus and light it up on fire until we burn for you. Use the gifts that you, you that you give us for your will and your purposes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Now let's go amongst ourselves and spread God's holy peace.